ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਪਤਤ ਪਾਵਨ ਭਗਤ ਬਛਲ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਨਿਧਾਨ ਚਾਵਰ ਛਤਰ ਤਖਤ ਦੇ ਮਾਲਕ ਧੰਨ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਪਾਵਨ ਔਰ ਪਵਿੱਤਰ ਹਜ਼ੂਰੀ ਅੰਦਰ ਜੁਰਮਲ ਬੈਠੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਰੂਪ ਗੁਰੂ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਰੋ ਬਲੈਸਡ ਟੁਡੇ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਸਾ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਸੰਗਤ ਆਫ ਧੰਨ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ like pai sahib just explained that seek to inspire a here today to do some prachar in english so main pehle sangat no maafi mangna ma vi je hon assi english de vich prachar karan lagge ha par is ta karan eh hai koi je apne jire apne naujawan hunde han guru ghara de vich ohna nu kai baar punjabi katha di aur vichar di nahi samajh lagdi is karke assi kuch ke samay vaste english de vich vichara sanjhiya karniya hai so today i'm going to talk about bhagat ravidas ji and generally the bhagat in gurbani in sri guru granth sahib ji because tomorrow is the avtar parv the day that bhagat ravidas ji came into this world in about around about 1450 so <clears throat> first i'll talk a little bit about who the bhagats are and how their bani is in sri guru granth sahib ji then after me by sukrat singh will do katha in english of a shabad of bhagat ravidas ji so first of all who are the bhagats or what is a bhagat in sri guru granth sahib ji obviously there is the guru's bani there's eight of the guru's bani contained in sri guru granth sahib ji and then as well as that there's some four gur six and there's 15 bhagats and 18 parts bani that is contained in sri guru granth sahib ji now sometimes people might question or get confused that how can a bhagat bani be in sri guru granth sahib ji they weren't the guru they were just a, a, a person a spiritual person how can their bani be contained in sri guru granth sahib ji and how can you believe that to be your guru hopefully i'll be able to explain how the bhagat bani is in there and why it's in there so bhagat ravidas ji is one of 15 bhagats whose bani is in sri guru granth sahib ji when Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji Maharaj was writing the, for the first time Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Sroop they were in Amritsar Sahib Aram Sar Sahib and they were writing what they were they had got together the pothiyan and I'll explain later how they did that they got together pothiyan from the previous gurus and they would sit in the mornings and Pai Gurdas Ji who's a very learned Sikh who has written vara who's written poetry about Sri Guru Granth Sahib ji and about the gurus and Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib ji said that their vara their writings are like the key to Sri Guru Granth Sahib ji just like if you want to open a door you'd need a key to open the door the key or the door to the guru is opened through Pai Gurdas ji vara by understanding what Pai Gurdas ji says to us so at that time Pai Gurdas ji used to write the bani as Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib ji used to read it So at that time Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib ji was writing the bani in what we call rags so there's 31 rags in Sri Guru Granth Sahib ji now a rag is to do with how you sing the keet and the mood of the keet and the type of keet and it is and it's split into rags so Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib ji Maharaj is sat there and they re- reciting the gurbani Pai Guru Das ji is ra- uh, is sorry Pai Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib ji is reading the bani out from their mouth and Pai Guru Das ji is writing it down in the form of Sri Guru Granth Sahib ji at that time at, at the end of a rag the first rag Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib ji started to uchar bani of bhagats uh, at that time Pai Guru Das ji or some of the other Guru Sikhs at the time hadn't actually seen any of these bhagats just like tomorrow is the avtar par bhagat Ravi Das ji like i said there's 15 bhagats whose bani was included so as Sri Guru the first bhagat whose bani comes in sri guru granth sahib ji is bhagat kabir ji so as the sri guru arjan dev sahib ji in sri rag started to achar or started to read out the bani of bhagat kabir ji bhai gurdas ji for in his mind that ha, who is this bhagat kabir ji who is this person that they are calling a bhagat that maharaj is calling a bhagat and how come they including their bani i haven't seen them now people try to put these questions into our minds but sri guru arjan dev ji answered them all them years ago so Pai Gurdas ji asks that who are the bhagats and where is their bani how you where where have you got their bani from at that time sri guru arjan dev sahib ji said when you come tomorrow morning to write and continue the seva with me in the morning come a few hours earlier about 
two three hours earlier than what you normally come and I will show you you will get to meet the Bhagats so the next day by Gurdashi just like they would do every day in the morning they got up just like every Gursik should do they got up in the morning they had a Ishnan then they went to Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji and when they went to Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji was sat with these 15 Bhagats and they were all reciting their Gurbani and they had all come that day to meet by Gurdas Ji and Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji introduced Pai Gurdas Ji to Pagat Kabir Ji who is known as the Sharomni Pagat so you can say the, 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 the leader of the Pagats in a sense or the one who was introducing the Pagats to Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji and at that time there was the 15 Pagats who were there whose Gurbani is contained in Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji from this Pai Gurdas Ji realized that these Bhagats have met Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji and there's a reason for them putting their Bani into Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So Bhai Guru Das Ji that day realized that these Bhagats come to Maharaj and they achar their Bani. Now a question that might come into our minds is fair enough they might have come to Maharaj or people try put into our minds but they weren't the Guru themselves. So how can their Gurbani be Guru Roop? Because in Gurbani we are told that Vaho Vaho Bani Nirankar hai. That Gurbani, Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, is a Kaal Purk Vahiguru. They are God on this earth. And they're known as what is the Sargun form of God. So the form of God on this earth. And then there's the Nirgun form, which is the uh, formless form, who we all adhere to be one with again after this life or during this life we can get one with a Kaal Purk Vahiguru. So how do we know that their Gurbani is the same as the Bani of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, Sri Guru Angad Dev Sahib Ji or any of the Gurus? How can we say a Pagat Bani is the same? First of all, to find that out, we'd have to think, where did Gurbani come from? What is Gurbani? So, Gurbani, Gurbani obviously first came from Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji. So, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji comes in 1469 to this world to save and the people of this earth because at the time the people in the earth the people who were calling themselves religious or people of religion of Dharam at that time were doing falseness everyone was just in falseness just like sometimes we get involved in worldly falseness at that time on the name of religion people were just doing idol worship they were just worshipping stones and doing wrong things, just doing physical things but they were not doing anything spiritual, there was nothing getting them any closer to Akal Parik Vahiguru. So at that point Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji comes to the world. Who is Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji? Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji was God themselves. They were the first form of God to come on this earth in a human form. So they're the first Sargun Sarup of Akal Parik Vahiguru and they came onto this earth to save humanity. So Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji comes to this world and from a young age they're not like any other child. They're going against these false practices. So people at that time were, didn't quite understand that this was a Purka Vahiguru. But as people spent time with Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji they started to realise that this is God themselves that's come onto this earth. So Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji comes onto this world and then in a place called Sul Sultanpur Lodhi Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji went into like a little river to have a Ishnan. They used to go in there every morning to have a Ishnan. And they went in one morning and they went in to have a Ishnan and they didn't come back out for a while. And the people of the town of the people were looking for them, the companions of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, that where have they gone? At that point, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji went back in front of the Nirgur form, in front of the formless form of Akala Purkavahi Guru. And they went there and what they did at that time was they got Mool Mantra. So just like we all recited, Ikko Ankar Tananak Hosi Pisat, they recited and they brought back the Mool Mantra. At the same time, they brought back the Vahiguru Mantra. And at the same time, they recited Jabji Sahib. Jabji Sahib is the first part in Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. It's the first part of a, a Gursikh's Nit name in the morning when a Gursikh wakes, when a Sikh wakes, they are to read five Baniya Nit name in the morning. Jabji Sahib, Jab Sahib, Suyye, Chopi Sahib and Anand Sahib. It's the first Bani then. It's the first Bani that is read when uh, Amrit Sanchara, Amrit ceremony, when Amrit Dabata is getting tiyar. So Maharaj then comes back to the world and to give this Gurbani of Akal Purk Vahiguru. So Sri Guru uh, Nanak Dev Sahib Ji 
that is going on their travels. They went on travels all around in all four directions. And they were going around and they were saving humanity as they went. And they were giving this Shabbat, they were teaching of the Shabbat. And as Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib used to go on their travels, they used to meet these people who were known as the Siddhs. Now what the Siddhs were, were like jogis. They're people who, you, like people in this day and age do yoga. They were like, if you could, in a way, they were hardcore yogis. In the sense that their whole life they just practice yoga. And how they did this, they used to do, they used to test their bodies by doing, putting their bodies through a lot of pain by doing yoga, yoga abhyas. They used to do certain things like, in Gurbani it tells us when we come to this world, we are not bound to an age. Obviously when everyone comes to this world, everyone's going to die one day and leave the earth. But you're not bound to a certain age. So when you come, you're not bound to that you're going to die at the age of 56, for example. The way it works is when you come, you have been given a certain amount of breaths. So however many breaths you've been blessed with, that's how many breaths you will take on this world and then you will leave the world. And the yogis understood this and they used to do these different things. They used to like take their breaths up into their what's known as the dasam duar and they used to long, elongate their lives. They used to make their lives longer. And Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji on their travels used to meet many of these yogis. And they used to think that they had they used to have these cult powers and cult ways of doing things and they always used to think that Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji felt because they didn't understand Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji was God on this earth they used to think that we can make Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji start following our ways and we can help, they can help us do the prachar and spread the word of yogis so at that time Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji is going around in the meeting them at various different places at one time when Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji meets the Sids the Siddhs, Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, every time the Siddhs are trying to teach Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji something, Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji gives them the true teaching, the true way or the true path, which is Sikhi. And Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji every time used to give them different teachings. And once the Siddhs started to realize that Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji is not someone that's going to follow the yoga path. So at that time they asked Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji that who is your Guru? Because just like in them times and just like in now, any time in Kaljug, which is the age that we're living in now, one has always got to be one with a Guru. Without a Guru, you will ne never get anywhere. And people in that time really understood that. These day and age, we've broken away from that. Because everyone thinks that they're cleverer than that or they're not, that they're bigger than that. But the truth of it is, without the true Guru, we will never become one with Akal Purkavahi Guru. Because the Guru, Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, is Akal Purkavahi Guru. So, when the Siddhs met Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji on this occasion, they asked Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, who is your Guru? That whose Jaila are you? Whose follower are you? And at that time, Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji said that they are the, the Gurus, the Guru of Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, they said was the Shabad. They said that the word of Akal Purkavahi Guru that they were acharing, that they had brought back from Sachkhand, that is the Guru. So Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji at this point are the Guru themselves but they've said that the Guru is the word of Akal Purkavahi Guru in the form of Gurbani which is now in the form of our 11th and everlasting Guru Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So straight away from the first instance Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji has said that the Guru is Gurbani. So what is Gurbani and what, does, what can Gurbani do for us? Now Gurbani, the rec reciting any Gurbani or any or Vahiguru Mantra, the things that Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji brought back is, like I've said many times, the direct word that is at Kalapurk Vahiguru. Now, what effect can that have on someone? Again, in the time of Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, when they were going on their travels, they were, went to a village where there lived a person called Sajjan Tag. Sajjan Tag was a person who would keep people in the house and he'd act very friendly and he'd keep them in their house. And what he'd do in the night is he'd feed them, obviously give them somewhere to rest, to sleep and then in the night he would rob their goods so any traveller that used to pass through that village because as you can imagine people didn't used to have cars and stuff then that you can just reach to somewhere one day it used to take many days for travellers to get to where they were going to so it's people like Sajjan Tag who used to keep them but Sajjan Tag was someone who used to rob them so Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji with Pai Mardana Ji who was a companion of Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji reach Sajjan Tag's bend they go into the bend and when they're in the bend, 
Obviously, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji goes into the house of Sajjan Thak with Bhai Mardana Ji. They have something to eat and then they go to sleep. They go upstairs to the bedroom and they're arresting Bhai Mardana Ji has gone to sleep. Sajjan Thak thinks well, it's the middle of the night now, this is the perfect time to go and rob these travellers. He obviously also didn't understand who Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji was. So as Sajjan Thak went upstairs, he went towards Maharaj. Maharaj is Akal Purakh Vahiguru, like I've said many times, they are the knower of everything. And at that time, Maharaj woke and they said to Pai Mardana Ji, now whenever Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji was going to Uchar Sumbani, they would tell Pai Mardana Ji to play the Rabab, which is a stringed instrument. And they said to Pai Mardana Ji, Pai Mardana Ji, Rabab Vajau Bani Ayya, that the Sumbani, I'm going to Uchar Sumbani, play your Rabab. And at that time, Maharaj Uchar a Shabad. And the Shabbat is basically the basic, the essence of that Shabbat, if you want to say, or the main teaching of that Shabbat was about how if you're one thing from the outside, but you're different on the inside. So if you look, if you've got a good look on the outside, but inside you've got bad intentions, then you're never going to get anywhere. And just by collecting wealth in this world, you're not going to get anywhere either. You might seem rich in this world and people might respect you because you've got some money, but in the essence, how long is that going to last for? It might last. It might not even last your whole life. It might last for a few, 10, 15 years, and then anything can happen, and you lose that, and then you've lost everything that you've got. That's all you've got. But if you put your, if you gain, if you bank up, the repetition and the seva of a kalapur kvahiguru, then that is a bank account that will never get wiped, that you can never lose, and that is the bank account that will help you in your future life. So as Sajjan Tag was coming upstairs. Maharaj said to achar this Bani. Sajjan Tag heard this Bani and he turned back. He thought they're not asleep. And this happened a couple of times. After this happened a couple of times, Sajjan Tag thought, rather than just listening that something's going on, why don't I actually listen to what's happening? At that point, Sajjan Tag listened to what Maharaj was actually singing, the Bani that they were singing. And just by listening to that one Shabbat, he realized what he was doing was totally false. And he realized that this was this wasn't just a normal traveller, that this is Akal Purkhavahi Guru. And at that time, he took to Maharaj and in that house where he used to rob people became what in them times was known as a Taramsal or what now we would call a Gurdara. So the people of that local area would come into the house of the ex-thief and he would do their seva, he would feed them and they would all sing the praises of Akal Purkhavahi Guru by reciting Gurbani. That is the power of Gurbani. Now, Sajjan Tag just listened to that one Shabbat once with pure concentration. There's many Sakya throughout the whole of, of history up until this present day of people concentrating once with full concentration on Akala Purukhavahi Guru and then they, they realize the truth and they become close to God and they become one with Akala Purukhavahi Guru. Because within Sikhi, Gurbani can mila you, can meet you with God whilst you're still alive. Many religions will tell you that when you die, you may go to a heaven, you may go to a paradise. But Sikhi tells us that through reciting Gurbani, you be can become what is known as Jeevan Mukta. So whilst you're still alive, you can be attuned constantly with Akal Purkhavahi Guru. You will be constantly remembering their name. But how can we get to that? It's through Gurbani, through Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, through the Sargun form of Akal Purkhavahi Guru. So just like Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, bless Sajjan Tag. If we want blessings, we can go to Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So that is how Gurbani came about, Siri, is the word of Akal Purkhavahi Guru. So then as the rest of the Gurus came, Sri Guru Angad Dev Sahib Ji, they used to go and as they were, where they stayed, they spent most of the time in Kudur Sahib, they would achar Bani. But Sri Guru Amar Das Sahib Ji spent a lot of time in Goindwal Sahib and they used to recite Bani there and their Gurbani was then contained in Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji and Sri Guru Arjun Dev Sahib Ji wrote it. Then Sri Guru Ram Das Sahib Ji spent a lot of time in what, we, what is now known as Amrit Sar Sahib, at that time was known as Ram Sar Sahib, as it was the place of Sri Guru Ram Das Sahib Ji where they used to stay. And then Sri Guru Arjun Dev Sahib Ji, when they collected the pothya of the previous Guru, so as the Gurus used to achar bani, their companions would write it down in a pothi form. And then they would collect, Sri Guru Arjun Dev Sahib Ji collected them. And then to get the pothya of Sri Guru Amar Das Sahib Ji, their son of Baba Mohan Ji, had them at, uh, at Sri Goindwal Sahib. 
ਐਂਡ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਅਰਜਨ ਦੇਵ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਸੈਨ ਬਾਬਾ ਬਾਬਾ ਬੁੱਢਾ ਜੀ ਪਾਈ ਗੁਰਦਾਸ ਜੀ ਔਨ ਸੈਪਰੇਟ ਓਕੇਜ਼ਨਸ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਥੈਮ ਪੋਥੀਆਂ ਬਟ ਦੇ ਡਿਡਨਟ ਗਿਵ ਥੈਮ ਬੈਕ ਸੋ ਵਾ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਅਰਜਨ ਦੇਵ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਡਿਡ ਆਉਟ ਨਿਮਰਤਾ ਦੇ ਵੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਥੈਮ ਸੈਲਫ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਸਾਟ ਆਊਟਸਾਈਡ ਦਾ ਹਾਊਸ ਆਫ ਬਾਬਾ ਮੋਨ ਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਸੰਗ ਅ ਨਿਊਮਰਸ ਨੰਬਰ ਨੰਬਰ ਆਫ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਸੋਚ ਇਸ ਮੋਹਨ ਤੇਰੇ ਉੱਚੇ ਮੰਦਰ ਮਹਿਲ ਅਪਾਰਾ ਆਉ ਆਫ ਨਿਮਰਤਾ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਅਰਜਨ ਦੇਵ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਡਿਡ ਦਾ ਵਡਿਆਈ ਡਿਡ ਦਾ ਉਸਤਤ ਸੰਗ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੇਜ਼ਿਸ ਆਫ ਬਾਬਾ ਮੋਨ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਦੈਨ ਰਿਅਲਾਈਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਗਿਵ ਦ ਪੋਥੀਆਂ ਬੈਕ ਦੇ ਗਿਵ ਦ ਪੋਥੀਆਂ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਅਰਜਨ ਦੇਵ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੈਨ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਗਸ ਦ ਪੋਥੀਆਂ ਟੂਗੇਦਰ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਥਮ ਐਂਡ ਸਟਾਰਟਸ ਦ ਕੰਪਾਈਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਲਾਖ ਐਕਸਪਲੇਨਡ ਐਟ ਦ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਸੋ ਦੈਨ ਹਾਊ ਇਜ਼ ਇਟ ਦ ਦ ਭਗਤ ਬਾਣੀ ਔਰ ਦ ਪੱਠਾ ਦੇ ਬਾਣੀ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਸੇਮ ਐਸ ਦ ਗੁਰੂਸ ਬਾਣੀ ਨਾਉ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਐਸ ਆਈ ਸੈਡ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਵਰਡ ਆਫ ਅਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ whether that was uchardan through their sargun form which was sri guru nanak dev sahib ji all the gurus and sri guru granth sahib ji or whether that was uchardan by someone was who was born with akal purak vahiguru so someone who is born with akal purak vahiguru becomes the same as them gurbani on numerous occasion tells us that once you become a, a, a normal human being can once they become one with akal purak vahiguru there's no difference between them and god because they are constantly attuned with a call for kawahi guru they be, reach a stage where they're constantly one but also at the time when the bhagats came and they uttered their bani to maharaj and maharaj then put their gurbani in to sri guru granth sahib ji there was actually 19 bhagats that came at that time but four of the bhagats that came who were also spiritual men or holy men of their period of their time or that wherever they lived their gurbani did not get included in maharaj why did their bani not get included and why did the bani of the pagats who is in sri guru granth sahib ji get included because the bani of the pagats the 15 pagats whose bani is in maharaj was the bani of akal purak vahiguru there was no farak there was no difference between the bani of sri guru nanak dev sahib ji that message that sri guru nanak dev sahib ji gave us and the message of the pagats and how was that because them four pagats whose bani didn't get included they had they they were still teaching false practices one of them in their bani their bani spoke of that you should stay quiet for long periods of time and through keeping quiet you will become one with the kal purak vahiguru that's what his belief was but in jab ji sahib sri guru nanak dev sahib ji in the second body of jab ji sahib straight away tells us sorry in the first body tells us of jab ji sahib tells us that just by staying quiet with your mouth just by not speaking anything doesn't mean your mind is going to become attuned with the kal purak vahiguru cuz when we're reciting gurbani we need to try concentrate our minds when we come to the gurudwara sahib sometimes we find it hard that what should we do sometimes we might just sit there quietly and try listen we should listen but then we should also concentrate our mind so he that bhagat used to think that just by keeping quiet you would attain one oneness with akal purak vahiguru and those three other bhagats who had different teachings that were not the same as that of sri guru nanak dev sahib ji not the same as that of akal purak vahiguru therefore their gurbani was not included in sri guru granth sahib ji so if sri guru arjan dev sahib ji who is akal purak vahiguru is god themselves on this earth can put the bani of the bhagats in then we should never doesn't matter who tells us or how educated someone thinks they are and they try to tell us that the bhagat bani is not the same as the guru's bani it should be different it should be separate they are totally wrong cuz if that was the case sri guru arjan dev sahib ji would not have accepted the bani of them 15 bhagats just like they didn't accept that the bani of four of the bhagats that also came cuz that did not that was not the same they were not one with the kal purak vahiguru so at that time sri guru arjan dev sahib ji compiled sri guru granth sahib ji in the first form and at that time it was the it wasn't known as sri guru granth sahib ji then it was known as pothi sahib it got to known as sri guru granth sahib ji when sri guru gobind singh sahib ji gave it gurta gaddi gave the guru granth sahib ji gurta gaddi made them the guru a hazur sahib so at that time the gurbani was known as pothi sahib and sri guru arjan dev sahib ji in their gurbani tells us pothi parameshwar ka thaan so that the pothi sahib at that time was yet, not yet the guru but was 
Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji is telling us that that is the place where God resides. Akal Purak Vaheguru resides in the Poti Sahib, it resides in Gurbani. Therefore, in each each letter of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, each letter of Gurbani, we should have full faith and belief. And through reciting it and having faith and belief and also respecting Gurbani. Now, a big thing is the respect of Gurbani. Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji, at the time of when they compiled Poti Sahib, was still the guru of the Sikhs. They were the guru of the Sikhs. But at that time when Poti Sahib was being compiled, every night they would take Poti Sahib and they would put him on like a bed, a palanga. And then Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji themselves would just sleep on a chadar on the floor. So they would always keep the Poti Sahib higher than themselves. And at that point, at that time, Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji was the guru. But they would sleep lower than the Poti. That is the Satkar, the respect of Gurbani they showed from the first day, as soon as Gurbani started being compiled together in Poti form. Then also when Poti Sahib was complete, when they were bringing Poti Sahib to what we now know as Sri Darbar Sahib, Sri Amritsar Sahib, Harmandar Sahib, or people call it the Golden Temple, at that time, when Maharaj brought the Poti Sahib, Baba Buddha Ji, who was the first Granthi of the Sikhs, he was the first Granthi of Darbar Sahib, brought the Poti Sahib on their head, on their seas, just like a Granthi Singh would take Maharaj Dasarup now. And Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji, the Guru of the Sikhs, at that time, now obviously from Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji to Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji, and then now over Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, we wave a chore over the Guru. But at that time, Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji was the Guru. But in the presence of the Poti, in the presence of Gurbani, they were themselves holding the chore Sahib and they were waving it over the Poti Sahib. So as they brought the Poti Sahib, then they, Baba Buddha Ji and all the Gursikhs at that time were barefoot. Sometimes people these days say that it doesn't matter if you wear shoes when you take Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji when you take Potiya. If Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji felt the need to respect the Poti Sahib so much that we don't wear shoes, then we should also not wear shoes when we take Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Sarup anywhere. So Maharaj themselves are doing Chaur Sahib. And then Baba Buddha Ji does Prakash, just like Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji's Prakash here. They do Prakash of Poti Sahib in Darbar Sahib. And then they took a Hukam Nama. The first Hukam Nama that came was the Shabbat that Veer Ji spoke about earlier. Santa ke karj aap khaloya har kam karavan aya ram. That was the first hukam nama that came from Poti Sahib. And then at that time, Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji themselves, still being the Guru, took matha to Poti Sahib. And they sat in the Sangat and Baba Buddha Ji took the hukam nama. That was the satkar of Gurbani that Maharaj Sahib had. So we also need to think, when we're in the presence of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, what we should do, where we should sit how we should behave. If Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji sat within the Sangat, then we should also sit in the Sangat, in Sangat Roop. So Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji then obviously gave full utmost respect to Poti Sahib. And then after that, as time went on, the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth Gurus gave full respect to Poti Sahib and any form of Gurbani, any form of Gur Shabad. Then, in the times of Sri Guru Gobind Singh, Singh Maharaj, in 1708, at Sachkan Sri Hajur Sahib, Abjal Nagar Nander, which is in the south of, in of India, in Maharashtra, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji gave Gurta Gaddi to Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And at the time of giving Gurta Gaddi, Maharaj also matha took, just like every one of the Gurus matha took. Now, from the times, so we've gone from Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji through to Guru Granth Sahib Ji giving Gurta Gaddi. Every single one of the Gurus did utmost respect of Gurbani, had the utmost satkar of any form of Gurbani. So we also, if we want to get closer to Akal Purkawahi Guru, need to respect Gurbani as well as reciting it. We need to keep the respect and maintain respect, whether that be Guru Granth Sahib Ji in the Gurdara Sahib or whether that be Gurdke Sahib or Potiya at home. Because in the time of Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji, the Poti Sahib was not yet the Guru, but Maharaj still gave it utmost respect. Therefore, that's what we should also do. So, back to the point of today. If anyone tries to ever tell us that Bhagat Bani is any different from the Bani of the Gurus, we know that it's not because Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji then would not have included it. Just like they did not include the Bani of four of the people that came who were 
claiming themselves to be Bhagats at that time, their Bani did not get included. Then Sri Guru, Grand, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji gave Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Gurta Gaddi. So for us, what should we do? What should we take away? Is we need to the Sadhgar of Gurbani and then also repetition of Gurbani. And like I said at the start, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, when, in, when they were Sanamuk, when they were in front of the Nirgun form of Akalapurk Vahiguru, they brought back Vahiguru Mantra so we can recite Vahiguru Mantra and we can get closer and become one with the Kalpurk Vahiguru. They recited Mool Mantra like we all repeated together at the start. So we could do a Bias, we could do repetition of Mool Mantra. And then they also recited at that time Jabji Sahib and then they told us that all Gurbani is the form of a Kalpurk Vahiguru. So we can recite any Gurbani to get ourselves closer to Maharaj. So, like I said at the start, tomorrow is the Aftar Purb of Pagatar Vidas Ji, who is one of the Pagats whose Bani is contained in Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji.